So, for this review, we drove 14 hours to the Dolomites from Poland. We slept four days in the car. Just to show you what this crazy new little drone can do. 4K 60, 120 FPS slow motion, vertical mode, focus track, sensors, 48 megapixel photos, and hyperlapse. This is the DJI Mini 3 Pro. And it's bloody amazing. In fact, it might be the last drone you ever buy. That's how good it is. Color grading is incredible with this drone. This is all 10 bit D Cine like. It's not over sharpened. It is a cinematic image. Stunning. I'm back, and I'm here with another drone review. This time, the DJI Mini 3 Pro, which is a very, very nice drone. I know a lot of people got it for the release date, and a few maybe stole it from a shop before the release date. I got mine after the release date, and I wanted to take my time to come back to you guys and say this is a drone that I can really recommend after putting it through hell. So first question I get a lot, Phil, should I get the Mini 2 or the Mini 3 Pro? Now DJI keep on stressing that the Mini 3 Pro is not an upgrade from the DJI Mini 2. I've flown the DJI Mini 2 a lot and it is a fantastic drone, but if I gotta be honest, I don't use it anymore because I have the 3 Pro, which really makes my life a lot easier. It has obstacle avoidance, down, forward and back. So it's hard, very hard to crash into something. If you've seen my obstacle avoidance film with the Mini 3 Pro walking through a forest, you'll see it does an incredible job and it's very, very smooth. So much so that I would even say that it's better than the Mavic 3 when it comes to obstacle avoidance and smoothness. It's also a drone that costs a lot less than the Mavic 3, so I'm less bothered if I crash it. The Mavic 3, if I crashed, I would it would be painful because DJI Refresh, which I recommend getting on every single DJI product you have, is not too bad on the Mini 3 Pro, whereas on the Mavic 3, it's, it's, it's a whole lot of money. So even if you do crash it, you still have to pay, you know, a, a big chunk of cash. Is it good as a beginner drone? Is it good as your first drone? Yes, it's absolutely fantastic because it has avoidance sensors. You don't have to worry too much about crashing into a tree or a building you can't see. I would always be wary. And it has a fantastically beautiful big sensor compared to the Mini 2, which really does make a difference and you can see that in the shots. The fact that you can also turn the camera vertically is really 2022. It's, it was on the Mavic, the original one, but it's come back to this. Right now for social media, that is fantastic. I don't have to crop in 320% to get a vertical image for Instagram. I just press a button, it flips to a vertical position and I can film in that position. Now tracking in vertical isn't too great because it's got a very narrow space that it tracks in. So it's a little bit, you know, rough on the edges. Whereas tracking in horizontal in normal mode it's a lot, lot smoother. And with every single update, I'm sure DJI is gonna make it better and better and better because they keep on updating. I mean, there are, there are channels on YouTube that have only updates. I mean, these guys are working 24 hours a day doing videos on updates. You know who I'm talking about. And, you know, that, that's a good thing because DJI is constantly updating these drones. The Mavic 3 too. It turned out to be an absolutely incredible drone. What what was at the beginning a disappointment to a lot of us who paid a lot of money for that drone, just like I did, ended up having a drone right now that's gone through a whole lot of firmware updates that is incredible. Same with this guy. And if you want to pick this guy up, it costs around a thousand dollars, thousand euro with the RC. Now the RC is superb. It's not the RC Pro, because the RC Pro costs the same amount as the drone and the RC. Whereas the RC with the screen, let's be honest here, it's slow. It is 
MS-DOS slow, but it does a great job. It frees up my phone. I don't have to worry about my mum or my dad calling when I'm flying at breakneck speeds in places I shouldn't be and my drone crashing. Here, I'm using a screen that's not really connected to anything because it doesn't have a SIM card slot, which is a pain for some people, but I'm not too bothered about it. It's gonna have a US dongle, as you saw, which also may be a little bit 2004, but it now has a firmware update where it connects automatically to your phone's hotspot, making life easier and, you know, you're always online with your RC. Now, the screen is nice and clear. I do use a Sun Life or a Sunny Life, whatever they're called, um, silicone-like cover, which has a screen kind of visor, so any sun is blocked out. I mean, during the evenings, it's, it's great. It's crystal clear, it is bright. But during the day, it's a little, little bit dark. So the visor really does help and it kind of makes holding it, you know, a little bit, little bit better. The Mini Free Pro is basically hollow. It's, it's a hollow shell, but not, not in a bad way. It's a hollow shell in a good way, which is only natural because they had to shave off a whole lot of weight to put in six obstacle avoidance sensors. So inside, it's it's basically, there's nothing to it. It's, they even took out the fan. So if you're doing an update, it could overheat. So make sure, you know, you've got a fan on it or you're not having it in the sun when you're doing an update, but it's basically a completely hollow shell. There's nothing in there. The battery slots in really nicely and you can buy an extended, you know, life battery, which takes up to apparently 40 minutes or 40 psych minutes, but that's not available in Europe. This battery lasts between 20 and 30 minutes. 30 minutes is a complete max, 25 is average, but if I'm flying in heavy winds, then this goes for about 20 minutes, 22 minutes. If I'm flying in normal conditions, we're talking about 25, 26 minutes, and if I'm not really doing much, it will get like 30 minutes. So it's a good battery, and I would recommend getting the Fly More Combo because you get two extra batteries, you get a charger so you can slot them all in. The charger will let you know how much there is and left on the batteries and you can charge it you know, with fast charge, which just makes life a lot, lot easier. You also get the bag and the bag is like the bag from the Mini 2. It's nice, it's simple, you can chuck everything in there without worrying, you know, it's carrying a huge case or something or sticking this in your, you know, pocket. So there are times where I spend hours and hours searching for good music. Recently, I found audio. So this is a quick word about today's sponsor. Without them, this would be a pretty boring film. With New Music Daily and a license that covers everything, audio just dropped an exclusive deal with Savage, the artist behind blockbusters like Spider-Man and Grey's Anatomy. I found out early on in my filmmaking career that music and sound effects make your video. It's something that just brings it to life. That's why finding good music and good sound effects is imperative to your creativity. If you pick up the Audio Pro plan and use my code philip 70 you'll get 70% off the Pro plan, which is once a year, and it covers all your licenses from YouTube all the way to commercial television. At $59 for the first year with a Pro plan, you just can't lose. The, the clamp to protect the gimbal is no doubt the worst design ever in the world. You know, I'm being honest, I'm not lying to you guys. I can't stand putting it on. There, There is a way you slide it on top and click it, but I don't, maybe I'm just not patient enough to do it so slowly and I am in a rush a lot of the time, so I don't use it and I just kind of chuck it in my bag without it. I know Freewell is creating one to stick on top and I think Sunny Life have one as well that you just slide on and you don't, have to worry about the gimbal, but it's protected at the same time. It's a very quiet drone. In terms of silence, it is the ninja of drones. It is incredibly, incredibly silent. So much so that I've done a lot of films, you know, because I've been pissing around with this drone before I got to my review. I really want to put it through hell, so I knew exactly what this drone is about and what it can handle. But it's so quiet that I filmed just basically stuff with a DJI mic, which I have right now, 
and the drone and I was really close and you could hardly hear it. That's how silent this drone is with these little orange tips that make sure, you know, you can see where the props are going so you don't cut your hand off when you're trying to catch it. So at 249 or 248 grams, I think, it's no doubt the best drone where in most countries you don't need any licenses or anything you can fly in most places around. If I had the choice between the Mini 2 and the Mini 3 Pro, I would get this. And if you do have the Mini 2, you can just use your RC because you can buy it standalone without the RC for I think about 750 euro or dollars. With the normal RC, you can pay an extra $100. And like I said, with the RC with the screen, it's about a thousand. Which sounds like a hefty price, but everything nowadays is going up in price. I mean, you, it's just, it's, it's part of life. It's part of the situation we have right now. The gimbal, incredibly smooth. It doesn't matter what kind of weather I've had this in. I've had this in very high mountains, maxed out right up the mountain edge, we're literally just in the middle of nowhere and it's been in winds that were so ferocious I wasn't sure I'd get it back. I was pretty confident but I wasn't sure and it, it, it handled it like like a pro, DJI Mini 3 Pro, it really handled it fantastically. And when it comes to color grading it's got 10 bit decine like which is incredible, it means the image won't fall apart even if you use my LUTs. <laughs> you can find my LUTs down in the description and they will just make your life a lot easier. I've got plug and play which you stick on and the image looks fantastic. And I also have like some cinematic LUTs. So the D Cine like 10 bit does an incredible job. It won't fall apart when grading. And the image isn't over sharpened like the Mini 1 or the Mini 2 is pretty sharp. It's a nice image. But this is, feels a little bit softer due to the larger sensor. They didn't have to, you know, crank up the sharpness that much. And another thing are filters. I do not take a drone out or a camera for that matter without filters. I'm always using ND filters. Freewell have come out with a, a whole load of filters, as has Polar Pro. Mind you, the Polar Pro finish at ND32. So I'm waiting for them to make a pack that's like ND64, ND128, ND256, just so we can use them with the f1.7 lens, which is fantastic. And you can use in manual focus, like I've done on a few films, where it's basically like, you know, half a meter away from you with really nice out of background focus. So because it's so light, it feels like a toy, but it flies like a pro. It feels like a toy, but it flies like a pro. And it's true, it's made out of really, really light plastic, which is a good and bad thing. It's a bad thing because you feel like you're holding a toy, but it's a good thing because if you crash it, you don't have to worry too much because it's very flexible. In fact, when we're in the Dolomites, Luke, first shot we were taking crashed straight into the side of a pine tree up a mountain, and he spent about three hours looking for it. He found it in the end, and the thing basically crashed into a tree, fell all the way down, and was fine. So he kept on flying for the next couple of days with absolutely no problems at all. So oh, the actual drone, like I said, feels like a toy, but it really is a pro drone that can handle a lot and it's flexible. If the Mavic 3 did that, I'm guessing everything would be broken because it's, it's, it's a much bigger, more fragile drone. The gimbal is huge, it weighs a ton. You know, it's, it's a completely different type of monster, the Mini 3 Pro. All the features are pretty amazing in this drone. I mean, you've got hyperlapse with waypoints, which is just incredible. You've got slow motion, which also looks great. And you have, you know, photos. So you've got 48 megapixel photos in this guy. And the photos coming out of it are breathtaking. They're really sharp, not over sharp, but they're really sharp. They're raw, so you can play around with them. You can print them out and they're gonna look fantastic. If we go back to the controller, it feels really great in your hand and it's not too heavy, it's not too light, the sticks are very, very responsive, it's kind of got this kind of, don't flick your sticks by the way, kind of great feel to it, you've got the photo button, you've got the record button, you've got all the buttons at the back, so I, I have it, you know, on vertical, horizontal, um, the wheels, it's, it's basically so versatile that I don't have to worry or go into the menu to change anything really. It charges very quickly, it has attachments for your bike if you do need to attach it with two screws at the back. It's got a fan at the back so it, you know, exhales heat. And like I said, the screen is really fantastic. It doesn't have antennas that come out like the RC Pro, but 
I haven't had any problems with the signal, even being pretty high up and pretty far away. I'm not gonna, you know, say how far or how high, but I didn't have any signal problems. It was 100% all the time, even flying through really odd areas with mountains and trees. It did a fantastic job. So I would highly recommend the RC. I'm sure there are gonna be more updates. The one thing, two things, the fact that it's slow, but the second thing is that it doesn't screen record in full HD. It screen records in 720p, which is a really odd move. I hope DJI do update it. So we have screen recording 1080p. So for us creators or YouTubers, we have a nice clear image we can stick on the computer, edit and show you guys exactly, you know, what's going on behind the scenes when we're filming with these fantastic drones. So is it good as a first drone? Yes, it's fantastic. If it's the first drone you're looking for, go for the Mini 3 Pro as a creator with all the automated functions, the master shots, which I'm not a huge fan of and I don't really like using. They're a little bit too robotic for me, but the quick shots are great. And the tracking is fantastic because you can basically do so much with the tracking. You can make it track itself or you can move it around yourself with spotlight. So the tracking options are very versatile and they're very smooth. It looks really beautiful. If you need a link, you're going to find one down below. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do, because I'm the drone guy, apparently. I've heard that before. I hope I'm not. There are loads of different subjects I do, but there will be more drone stuff. I've had a great time flying this drone. Thanks for all of your support. And um, yeah, going to catch you on the next one. I don't know if it's just the Bon Jovi music talking, but it's the Bon Jovi. I haven't been honest with you guys. I've never been a good drone pilot. In fact, if it wasn't for DJI, I probably wouldn't fly drones at all. With innovations like the DJI Mini 3 Pro pushing boundaries, it helps me push my boundaries. This is an amazing drone. I absolutely love it to bits.